If you've ever been so excited and proud of yourself that you successfully not only made the sugar wax, but used it only to wake up the next day and be like, what the f bruising is never really okay because no amount of ice or amica cream is going to make this go away anytime soon. So it's a sign that there's a technique flaw. And we all know how bruises occur. Your skin is absorbing enough force that it causes your capillaries to rupture. Blood just sits in the surrounding tissue. Then you can see the pigmentation on the surface of your skin. So as you probably guessed, the force that I'm talking about is pulling. So what you must always do when you go to remove your sugar is make sure that you're using your free hand to not only hold the skin, but to hold it as tight as you possibly can. When you place your hand, you want to either apply pressure and then drag it so that you're pulling the skin until you can't pull anymore, or you want to grip the area to the point that the skin is, again, as tight as it can possibly go, which is why I'm holding my calf like this. So that's number one, because as long as the skin does not have the capacity to move, it won't. And number two is going to cycle into the next issue, which is breakage. You want to make sure that when you go to pull the sugar off or remove it, move parallel to the surface that you're waxing. So in a nutshell, that basically means don't pull up, don't pull on a diagonal. So here I'm aiming for my ankle and you can tell that I'm staying parallel to the skin because my sugar just easily folds back onto itself. So that's a good indicator that you're doing something right. The advantage of this again is not only that it's proper form and that it will help you deter getting any bruising, it's also this technique that's going to reduce breakage. Similar to the bruising, this is something that you would notice probably one to three days later because when you go to run your fingers over your skin, expecting it to be really smooth, instead you may feel stubble. This is normally the culprit. While you may have removed the majority of your hair from the root, you might have just missed a few and that's totally fine. In fact, I actually experience it more so with my legs because of my KP. Because keratosis pilaris makes your skin overproduce keratin, you basically get a little bit more buildup that can make it more difficult for the hair to escape the follicle like really easily, which is demonstrated by me even just trying to pluck this hair. And also with regard to technique, you really want to make sure that you're always removing the hair in the direction of growth because that's generally the number one reason. Remember that your hair can grow in many different directions, even in one small given area. So feel free to experiment with different angles and eventually you'll find the one that works the best. Now I'm currently in the process of writing a blog post, which is hopefully going to point you guys in the right direction of answering your questions and then giving you a coordinating video to go along with it. And I'll even link the playlist to all of my sugaring videos in the description box. But if you want to read that post, my website is abetweene.com. As you probably full well know by this point, I use Squarespace. They make my life so much easier because there's templates for everything I need to do. In fact, I know I say this all the time, but whether you want to build your blog post or storefront or landing page completely from scratch, you can basically puzzle piece it together with all of the elements available to you. And in addition, you can even create a bio site, which is kind of a landing page for all of your social media platforms that can help people navigate quickly and easily. So if you haven't already signed up, you can get 10% off with my code ABetweenE or go to squarespace.com backslash ABetweenE. Now, if you've ever been sugaring yourself and then you run into this problem, your issue is actually that you may be using the wrong type. As I've mentioned in previous videos, there are like three to four types that you can make. I will link that video if you haven't seen it and all the rest in the description box. But basically my issue here is that this sugar is too soft because as you can see, it's so melted that I can't get it off. It's breaking down from my body heat and also I'm sitting in front of a sunny window with no fan or AC. Therefore, like in the video that I just posted a couple weeks ago, I'm going to overcompensate by using a firmer sugar or harder sugar. It's another reminder, if you do get stuck in this predicament, you can remove it by either washing it off with warm water or if you have fabric strips, wax strips, you can use that. Or like I was saying, since I know I need a firmer sugar in this case, I can just add that to what I'm already doing and it will successfully remove it. So yes, in the same regard, if you have two different types of formula and you need something kind of in between, you can absolutely take a piece of each and mix them together into a ball. And without a doubt, the number one mistake that most people run into is their sugar is just overcooked. And you'll know that your sugar is overcooked because it's basically just too hard. It either turns into a lollipop, like it's literally a rock, or it may not be completely hard, but it's just very, very firm to the point where you try to manipulate it and it's just not very easy to do. And it's definitely not easy to apply to your skin because it either rolls right off or it's too difficult to spread and it kind of hurts, especially if your hair is really long. 
And you'll know it's undercooked if your sugar never actually solidifies, like it doesn't firm up at all. It just stays really liquidy. It's so thin that if you try to use it with strips, it still really doesn't kind of remove much hair or any at all. Or if you're trying to apply it and flick it off and you can't, again, because it's not a paste consistency, it's just syrup. If you never even get a chance to use your sugar because you're struggling to make it properly, then I would recommend that you watch this video because I go over some of those very frequent issues and I give you solutions and walk you through the whole cooking process step by step, including how to test it so that you know whether or not you've reached the type that you wanted to make. So those are my top four sugaring mistakes and how to fix them. But if you guys have any additional questions, of course, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And I think I'm going to follow this video up with another version, except for instead of the things that you're doing wrong, it's going to be things that you think are mistakes, but are actually totally normal. Let me know. Or if you have suggestions for another type of sugaring video, go off. Bye.